as we move forward in this uh, Raspberry Pi 4 series, in case uh, there are some people out there watching the channel, watching the videos that um, are very new to this, that may need to know some of this stuff, that's, that's, who, that's who this is going to be targeted towards, okay? If you don't need to know some of this basic stuff, then you can obviously just move on to another video. So we're gonna be working with the Raspberry Pi 4. This is what it looks like, okay? This is the Raspberry Pi 4. This is actually the two gigabyte model. And then I have another one of my Raspberry Pi 4s right here, okay? Um, this is the eight gigabyte model. Now, I have this fan on top, okay? But other than that, if I were to take this fan off, these two Raspberry Pis, they would look identical. You, you would not even be able to tell that there's any difference, okay? This one's operating at two gigs. This one's operating at eight gigs, okay? So I'm gonna be using this one in the series. Now, if you happen to see this one in the videos, I just want you to understand how we got to this point. So we flashed our, our SD card. We have the Raspberry Pi OS on our SD card. And then we're just taking the, the SD card, the micro SD card, and we're gonna put it in the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Now, in some of the videos or pictures, I'm probably gonna be using this one just because it's easier for me to grab. I don't have it hooked up to anything. I don't have this big fan on top. So to show you how we're hooking it up, I'm gonna use this one. But when I'm actually doing these videos and we move forward into this Raspberry Pi 4 series, this is the Raspberry Pi that I'm going to be doing all the, the work on. Um, but since I already have this fan on top of it, I don't want to take it apart to show you guys step by step how I, how I did that because it's already on there. So that's why I'm bringing both of these out. So I showed you that you can just flip this Raspberry Pi over and then this is where you slide in the SD card. After you have um, flashed it with the OS, you can just slide it in the back, push it in, and that's it, we're good to go. Uh, we gotta talk real quickly about heat sinks. So you have a few different chips on this board and they do want you to put heat sinks on them that helps to dissipate heat from these chips. If you can, you do want to do that. Uh, don't don't skimp out on uh, using heat sinks and or some type of fan to help cool your Raspberry Pi down because it will um, it allow it to perform better. So you want you want to do that now. Just a little tip for you guys. I've I've had to do a lot of things with my Raspberry Pis, and though you may have a Raspberry Pi and you may think that you're going to be using it for one thing down the road, especially if you continue to learn and experiment with different things, you're probably going to end up using your Raspberry Pi for something completely different eventually. And if that's the case, you may end up having to take your heat sinks off. So just a quick little tip for you guys. If you can, make sure you do use heat sinks, but don't, don't smash them on there, okay? Just, just set them on. Just set them on lightly so that they're on there, they do their job, the adhesive sticks, but don't push into them, don't smash them, because if you eventually have to pull these back off, you're gonna be doing a lot of twisting and turning and you don't wanna do that, you don't wanna end up messing something up on your Raspberry Pi because you put a 25 cent heat sink on there too tight. I typically, for any of my Raspberry Pis, I try to have a switch on my power cord because it just comes in very handy. I like it. I like to have some type of power switch so that I'm not finding myself having to unplug a cord somewhere, pulling a plug out of an outlet when I'm turning my Raspberry Pi off. I don't want to do that. I don't like, like that way of uh, having to pull plugs out from my Pi and all of that. So I always try to make sure that uh, especially with a Raspberry Pi 4 that I have a power cord with some type of switch and it just has a real nice uh, push button you can hear it nice little push button that that uh, powers it on and off 
Now, you still have to, you know, click on an icon or type in a command to shut your Pi down, but this is what you would be using to actually disconnect power completely from the Pi after you have shut it down on the desktop or the command line. What I'm going to be using is, is I'm going to be using this Raspberry Pi 4. It is the 8 gig and it has this fan on it. This is um, an ice tower cooling fan that um, I've had on there for a, a little while now. And it has these lights on it that change color. It looks very nice, especially at night. Um, a lot of this is just for show, you know, but it does actually still function as a, a fan and, and, it, and it cools it down, you know. So you can see on the, on the back of it here, there's all these metal fins, kind of like an air conditioner. Whether you have a fan like this or you have one of the more traditional fans for the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, say for example, like this right here. Um, so this was one of the, my first Raspberry Pi cases. This is for a Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, it's all clear and you have your fan which sticks to the inside of the case. So whether you're using a case like this or no case, whether you're using a fan like this or a fan like this, just use something. If you don't have a fan, use heat sinks. If you can use heat sinks and a fan, use both. Great. Uh, you definitely want to use something. But um, you can see that this one right here, it is actually still connected to the pins. And if you look at the pins, it's connected to the second to last pin at the end. Okay, so right here, the second to last pin, it's connected with the red wire. And then next to that is connected with the black wire. If you were using this case and this fan, it would be the same setup. You would have this red wire connected to the second to last pin. So if I try to give you guys a close up here, this red wire would connect to this pin on the outer edge and it's the second to last pin. So if you are just getting your Raspberry Pi 4 together, you have a kit, you have standalone parts, whatever it is you have, and you need to connect the fan, you wanna follow along with this series, Okay, this is what you would do. Straightforward, just connect to those two pins right there. Your, your red wire, second to last pin, and then your black wire right next to that, okay? So we got our fan, the fan's already hooked up. The pins are already connected. I have my SD card, okay? Remember, I got my, my power cable, okay? You're gonna take this end and to power up the Raspberry Pi, you're gonna have it plugged in right there. This is how we're gonna be getting power to our Raspberry Pi, okay? And then we're gonna take an HDMI and one end has the micro HDMI and I'm gonna plug it in to that very first one right there next to the power, okay? And then the other side of the HDMI, it has the full size, full size HDMI plug uh, end and this is gonna plug into my monitor, which in my case is gonna be a TV. Last thing here is we're gonna need a keyboard and mouse set up to control it, because uh, we're gonna be using this mainly as a desktop. I wanna power this thing up and use it like a desktop. For that case, I like to have a full-size keyboard. I have a few different setups here, and there's some separate videos on these, okay, that I talk more in depth about these, why I have them, why I would use them with Raspberry Pis. These are mini wireless keyboards. But what I'm using day to day for uh, this Raspberry Pi is a full size keyboard. Okay, so here's a Logitech, it's like $20. Uh, is Bluetooth, uh, takes a few batteries. So you got the keyboard and then you have the mouse. Uh, it works well, inexpensive. Okay, gets the job done, I like it. And it comes with one Bluetooth dongle. This one Bluetooth dongle, it controls both the keyboard and the mouse. So that I do like. Um, 
I'm only plugging one thing in. So it doesn't matter if I do the USB 2.0 or the 3.0. These blue ones right here, those are your USB 3.0s. Um, these are your 2.0s. It really does not matter. But my go-to is probably typically just to plug it in right there at the end in one of the USB 2.0 ports. Okay, that's the setup. That's how we're going to use this moving forward in, in this particular series. It's going to be interesting. So stay tuned, guys. As always, fresh Raspberry Pi.